Module 4, Topic F, Lesson 24. And we're going to be solving word problems using fraction and decimal multiplication. Let's take a look at number one. Jesse takes his dog and cat for their annual vet visit. Jesse's dog weighs 23 pounds. The vet tells him that his cat's weight is 5 eighths as much as his dog's weight. How much does his cat weigh? So let's go ahead and take a look. So we know that the dog weighs a total of 23 pounds. And we know that this the unit, fractional unit is eighths. So I need seven lines. It's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we know that the cat weighs five eighths. So that's one, two, three, four, gives you five. So we're saying that five eighths of 23 that's equal to 5 times 23 over 8 5 times 23 give you 115 we divide that by 8 we get 115 divided by 8 that's going to be 1 8 11 it's 8, 9, 10, 11. It's 3, 35. It's going to be 4. It's 32. Subtract. We get 3. 3 what? 3 eighths. So that's equal to 14 and 3 eighths. So the cat weighs 14 and 3 eighths pound. Or if we were to write that out as a decimal, 3 eighths would be three hundred and seventy five hundred so it'll be fourteen pounds three hundred seventy five hundredths of a pound so that's how much the cat weighs all right let's take a look at number two here <coughs> an image of a snowflake is one and eight centimeters wide if the actual snowflake is one eighth the size of the image what is the width of the actual snowflake. Express your answer as a decimal. So let's take a look. So we know that it is eighths. Once again, so we're going to take our whole snowflake, which is going to be expressed as a one and eight tenths centimeter. And the actual size is an eighth of that. So we know we need our seven parts. One, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that this right here, this small section that's supposed to be a bracket, that's the actual size. So we're going to do the math and we say, well, one eighth of one and eight tenths so we have one eighth times one and eight tenths is the same thing as 18 tenths and we can cross cancel here well i know that i can say of uh, two 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. That's my greatest common factor of 8, and 18 is 2. So I can say that this is equal to 9 fortieths. 9 times 1 equals 9. 4 times 10 equals 40. And then I say, well, I want to get this into a decimal form, so I have to multiply by something that's going to give me a 1,000. And I know it's going to be 25 over 25 and get 1,000 and then 25 times 9. 5 times 9 is 45. So 4. 9 times 2 is 18 plus 
4 is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 10s will give me 225 and as a decimal it'll be 225 thousandths so the snowflake the actual snowflake is 225 thousandths of a centimeter wide all right moving on to number three <coughs> excuse me a community bike ride offers a short ride for children and families it's five and seven tenths of a mile followed by a long ride for adults which is five and two-thirds times as long if a woman bikes a short ride with her children and then a long ride with her friends how many miles does she ride all together? We know that we're going to take the amount of the long ride times the short ride. And we say, well, she did both of these. Well, that will be equal to, if we did our backward C here, we'll say five, let's change the color, three times five, 15 plus two equals 17 thirds. And then we had five times, or 10 times five plus seven equals 57. All right, so now with this, I could use my cross cancellation and say, well, I know that 57, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 57 divided by 3 is going to be 19. You can stop and do that division if you want to. Here it is. So the greatest common factor would be 3. I divided both by 3. Now I have 19 times 17 and 1 times 10. So I know that's going to be 10 in my denominator. Now I have to find out what 17 times 19 is. Well, 7 times 9 is 63. 9 times 1 is 9 tenths plus 6 tenths is 15 tenths. And then... That would be 170. No, I'm just going to move my decimal place over. Get rid of my 6 here. That's 12. 323 tenths. So now I have 323 tenths, which is equal to 32. And three tenths of a mile. All right, so now if I was to go ahead and add that together with the two, I know that she rode her 32, oops, 32 and three tenths of a mile for the long ride, so it was five times as long I'm sorry, five and two thirds times as long. And then I will add it to the five and seven or five and seven tenths miles for the short ride. So now I can find out how much she rode in all. That's 10, that's eight, three. So she rode 38 miles altogether. She rode 38 miles total. All right, moving on to next. So Sal bought a house. Let's see. So 12 years ago, or we're going to just imagine it was 12 years ago. Sal bought a house for $78,524.60. 12 years later, he sold the house for two and three-fourths times as much. 
what is the sale price of the house so we know that in order to do this let's just go ahead and turn this into a decimal two and three fourths is equal to two and seven five hundredths so we're going to multiply this number our total purchase price times the increase amount it increase 2.75 times so uh, the easiest way would be to convert this into uh, our uniform or we can just say well we know we have two digits after the decimal so we have to multiply by 100 to get rid of that let's move it over 10 on 100 so that's times 2 place value units 10 100 2 times 2 place value units so we know we're going to have to divide by 4 once we get at our partial products so let's go ahead and multiply that out 0 5 times 6 is 30 5 times 4 is 20 plus 3 10 plus 2 25 plus 1 then I have 40 plus 2 35 plus 4 all right I'm going to do the rest of multiplication here uh, I'm gonna stop just to uh, go ahead and go through the multiplication and pick back up all right so now that I multiplied all of my numbers here we're going to go ahead and add our partial products we have 0 0 5 6 that's 13 20 22 that is 10 5 sorry 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 2 plus 2 is 14 9 and 9 is 18 plus 1 is 19 that is 3 plus 7 is 10 plus 4 plus 1 is 15 and then 11 and 2 all right so now don't forget I have four total place value units that I had to divide by because I multiplied by 2 and then multiply by 2 so that's 1 2 3 4 so the amount that he would have sold the house for would have been $215,942.65. All right. So if you had trouble with that multiplication, stop and go back through it and just make sure you're double checking all of your multiplication here. Let's move on to number five. So number five, in the fifth grade at Moravia Park Elementary, there are four fifths as many students who do not wear glasses as those who do wear glasses. If there are 60 students who wear glasses, how many students are in the fifth grade? All right, so we know that there are four fifths students that do not wear glasses. So let's take a look at it. If we had a total of students, we just call it, call it do not wear glasses. and students who wear glasses similar to our exit ticket today we're going to have two grids we said four fifths and then we have our one, two, five fifths and we know that there's a total of five units here one two three four five units but we're saying there's 60 students who wear glasses, so that would be five. If five units equals 60, then one unit equals 60, 
divided by 5. So then 1 unit is equal to 12. So then if we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 units, and if I so, dot, 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 9 units equals 9 times 12. And we know 9 times 12 is equal to 108. There are 108, oops, there are 108 students in the fifth grade. All right, let's see if you can finish number six on your own, and uh, we'll have a discussion about that in class. Hopefully, this video helps. As always, like the video and comment below if you're having any troubles or if you uh, were able to solve any of these on your own. I would like to hear about it.